um, our next speaker um, on African doers, uh, Lux Ubuntu, a humanist business model out of Africa. Welcome to the stage, Swadi Martin, queen of African luxury. Thank you, Swadi. Our, we aren't going to be able to do a presentation, but Swadi will do a talk for us, and um, we can take questions as well if we need to. Okay. Oh, we can both sit here. Yeah. I don't know if everyone is still awake. <laughs> We are all well, trying. We are all trying. We'll try to make it interesting. So, Swati, tell us about um, African luxury. What is it all about? Okay, so maybe let me introduce myself. So, I'm not the queen of African luxury. Mm -hmm. I'm just an entrepreneur, and I founded a company called Iswara, uh, which is a company um, manufacturing and exporting uh, high-quality African teas. So, really what we're doing is, um, instead of exporting African uh, commodities outside of Africa without them being transformed. We also transform them here in South Africa and then we export. So we're present in 17 countries uh, around the world and we're present with major international retailers like Harrods, Selfridges. We also have clients such as the Four Seasons, uh, St. Regis. So yeah, we, uh, um, we have a large portfolio of clients. And at the end of this year, we'll be five years old. Five years old. Yeah, so we're still a baby company, really. <laughs> but five years is a lot. It's definitely a lot. Tell us about um, uh, the humanist business model out of Africa, Lux Ubuntu. Well, I mean, I have to say I, I feel um, that um, I, I feel in great company because having heard um, the speakers before and everyone is very concerned about uh, having a humanistic approach or humanist approach and, um, you know, putting the heart at the center. So that's what we do as well. Um, our business model is called the Lux Ubuntu. The idea is how do we put back the human at the center of business practices? And how do we uh, break down everything that we think or have, have been taught in terms of uh, business practices and, and reframe them, uh, putting the human at the center? Okay. And your view on business, entrepreneurship as well, and leadership in Africa, do you think enough is being done in terms of collaborating with different countries? Well, I mean, I think uh, Africa has a unique opportunity today to um, come up also with unique models. Um, you know, a lot of the business models, the business practices, business pro processes that we learn um, are really coming from, I would say, a single uh, source, which is mostly an uh, American uh, way of doing business. And I think in Africa, we have our own uh, practices. Um, we, we also, it starts with, for example, we all take care of someone. And um, it doesn't matter if you're African or not. The fact that you're living in Africa means that you're taking care of someone. It could be family, it can be your employees. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a reality that's very unique to Africa. And if you translate that in the context of business, it means that you are also having really that Ubuntu approach that um, several people have mentioned before, is I am because we are. So I think as Africa, we have an opportunity to also export a way of doing business which is really centered around the human. How have you managed to reach, extend your reach literally into 17 countries you've said? Um, it's difficult for many business to extend their reach within one particular country. What is, what, what is your secret? What is it that has allowed you to be able to do that? Well, I mean, export is a major export of finished products, not export yes. of raw commodities. Export of finished products out of Africa is a major challenge. Um, to give you an example, uh, it is 15 times cheaper 
to export from France to uh, the US than from France to Nigeria, for example. It is approximately the same distance. So you're paying the same fuel, you're paying you know, basically the same cost. But uh, for us to export the finished product, we pay 15 times, our clients would pay 15 times more. So that makes our products highly uncompetitive. It's a very different story for the raw commodities uh, channels because these are very optimized. So it's very easy to export raw cocoa, um, raw coffee and etc. All raw materials are very easy to export because those export channels have been set up since uh, the colonial times. But for our finished products, it is very challenging. And it doesn't matter, um, you know, some initiatives that have been put in place like AGOA, uh, which really address the issue of taxes, but it doesn't address the issue of cost of transport. Um, so in our case, because we are dealing with a high value product, which is really a niche product, we've been able to uh, go around the issue, but still, it is, it is, I think if we didn't have the issue of cost of transport, we would probably have reached much more countries by, you know, after five years. 17 is, is, is not a lot. If we were based in Europe, for example, after five years, we probably would be exporting to 50 countries. And this is a challenge that, um, you know, I've raised often, but I feel that no one is really ready to, ready to address the issue. People always ask entrepreneurs, what, you know, what are some of the roadblocks to uh, you growing your business, but the cost of transport is a real issue. And in closing, what, what message can you leave with young women in business who are finding it difficult? How to keep going? What can we do to motivate them? Well, I mean, I, I think it is extremely, I mean, there are lots of entrepreneurs here. It is extremely challenging to be an entrepreneur in Africa. I mean, there's no, um, you know, I mean, there's nothing rosy about that. Um, I find that not only we have to uh, overcome challenges that entrepreneurs all around the world have to face, but we also have our own uh, unique set of challenges. So macro challenges like uh, infrastructure, um, as mentioned, also cost of transport, um, of export, access to skills. Um, you know, it, in other parts of the world, you know, it is very sexy to uh, work for a startup and people are uh, willing to, uh, you know, high caliber talents are willing to go work for startups. In Africa, that's not the case. You know, as entrepreneurs, we, we have uh, access, you know, first of all, there is a challenge of skills, mm -hmm. but as entrepreneurs, you know, and, uh, and with, I would say, limited access to capital, it is very difficult to access those skills. So, you know, I feel that the generation here, uh, the generation of African entrepreneurs, we're really trying to break ceilings and break grounds for next generations to come and to have it easier than we have. So uh, it is challenging. I think we have to be very realistic about it and find, um, you know, smart ways to survive, actually. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Swadi. We really appreciate your time to come and chat to us today. You're very welcome, thank you. Thank you.